Hi everyone, it's Emily Francis with Oh My Malta, and today we are at the Malta Chocolate Factory with the owner, Neil Hitchcock. Neil, thank you for being here and letting us take a sneak peek behind. And before I get started asking you questions, when I first moved to Malta two years ago, I became really crazy about buying gifts for my family yeah. that were unique to Malta that they wouldn't be able to order online. And this was one of the places that I came to. This is how I know about this. And I ordered the hot chocolate in the beautiful mug with the little spoon and sent them home. So now I'm really thrilled to be doing this interview and learn about chocolate from start to finish. Exactly. So we. We have been making chocolate now for, um, in a week's time, it will be five years. We're having our five year anniversary. Um, so we're quite excited about that. Um, and we love making chocolate and we love making gift ideas that people can take home, whether it's take home here on the island to family and friends, or whether it's take home to the person who dog sat for you whilst you're on holidays or- Oh, I um, love it. Or you're, you're, you, you can't go back to the office without a gift. It's and so, true. so our whole our whole thought process here was, what could we put together that would be uniquely Maltese that would that would highlight some of the beautiful flavours that are in Malta, um, and that people can take home and that um, their friends will like, because not everybody likes nuts and almonds and salt right. and things like that, but everybody seems to like. Now, before we jump into the chocolate making, the candy bars that you sell, they all have the Maltese cross and they have some of the cutest sayings. They even have a happy birthday to you chocolate bar. They have um, chili in the chocolate. They have all different sorts of flavors and it's a really beautiful gift to give. That's exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. So even if you just ran out for the afternoon, because we're in Bujiba, mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that part. We're sitting here in Bujiba and if you come home or come back to the office, you really should bring something with you. You don't want to be empty handed. And this is the place to do it. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of gift ideas, but you don't have to come here to Bajiba to get it. Oh. Because we have an online presence. So we deliver anywhere around Malta and Gozo. And we're on those two delivery apps. So you can actually buy from oh, those as well and get wonderful. it. Wonderful. So I didn't know that. There are hundreds of ways to get us. Okay, that's a lot of fun. Sometimes, if it's a delivery, you might even get me delivering. Nuh uh. On really? My motorbike. Yeah. Bit of fun. Okay, that's really cute. All right, so <laughs> I see something in front of me and I want to point it out to everyone because what is this? So this is a cocoa pod. So these come from the cocoa tree. They grow on the they grow on the on the um, root or on the trunk. Um, they don't tend to grow out like apples do on the side, so they grow in the middle here. Um, a tree will grow about 50 of these in any one okay. season. They're inside, you can't hear these rattle so much because they are uh, We've used these so many times in our education. I'll we'll talk about that later. Um, there's about 30 to 40 cocoa beans, and it's the cocoa beans that are used for chocolate. So you break this open, okay. and the beans are in like a, um, a moist skin, a bit like, so this is, this is just a piece of fruit, just like okay. an apple. So they take the beans and they dry them for um, about three weeks, and then, and that helps with the fermentation process, and the taste of chocolate that you love is built in that process. Oh, That's when you start it. getting your chocolate. Then um, they, they they dry them out, put them in sacks, and then they get to the factory where they're crushed and crushed and crushed and made into cocoa powder and cocoa butter. So okay. about 50% of the cocoa bean is uh, oil or butter. Okay. And so when they're crushed, the cocoa powder or cocoa butter is separated from the cocoa powder. Um, then they're remixed again with magic ingredients like sugar and milk, get all things nice, uh, and get made into chocolate. So really, if you want, looking at dark chocolate, it's got cocoa powder and cocoa butter, okay, and sugar in it. That's all there is in dark chocolate. That's unless the whole ingredient list. Unless it's 100, percent okay. And then of course it's not got sugar in there either. It's just okay. just this. the cocoa powder and, yeah, cocoa, and butter. The cocoa butter. Separating the cocoa butter and putting it back in means that you can turn um, the it into a solid like we have with our chocolate. And in fact, it was only about 150 years ago that they worked out how to separate the cocoa butter and put it back in to make actually the solid chocolate that we eat today. Before then, before then, you could only drink chocolate. Chocolate's been around for about 5,000 years, okay. but it's only in the last couple of hundred years that you can actually eat it. We go through this in some of our classes upstairs where we talk about how chocolate is made, where it comes from, the history of chocolate. That's amazing. So, okay, 
Take me in here now, because I see some of the stuff going on. Take me through the process of, let's say, milk chocolate. Okay, so I'll tell you how milk chocolate's made. It's very much like dark chocolate. It's got choc cocoa powder, cocoa butter, sugar, and one other ingredient. What's milk. Yay! Hey. Yeah. <laughs> what it does have is milk powder because because liquid and chocolate don't go well together. It seizes up. So okay. And it was only about two hundred years ago when a guy called Nestle, who you may have heard of, yes. invented milk powder. Until then, all we wow. ever had was dark chocolate. Oh wow! Yeah, and so, that's how milk chocolate. And that's how milk chocolate got introduced. the extended milk powder with there. Okay, that's really chocolate. cool. So from our point of view, all those ingredients are pre-mixed for us okay. in Belgium at one of our chocolate suppliers. Okay. Uh, so we use a, a, a couple of major chocolate suppliers. Okay. And we get our uh, what we call couverture brought to us from Belgium. Okay. And it comes in small pellets of chocolate. So we put it into our different machines, either the wheel machine or our new machine that we've just got a month ago. Um, or into our the white, white chocolate. chocolate, and I do want to talk about white chocolate because that's jump in the white chocolate. Well, it's got to be part. a little different, right? Ah, okay. Well, yes. So we do that, and we melt the chocolate, and there's a specific chemical process that has to happen to make chocolate. So chocolate is a combination of sugars and fats, so the cocoa butter and the sugars. If you get that right and you get those blended together, you get that beautiful chocolate that has the snap, that's oh, shiny. Oh, I know that chocolate. You know yes. That chocolate. If you don't get that right, you get the chocolate with the white on the outside, or which is called a bloom. Okay. Um, and there are six different ways that chocolate can come together, that the fats and the sugars of chocolate can come together. We want type five to happen because that gives you that bite and that shine and everything that you want. All the other ones, don't give it to you. So you've got a 16% chance of success when you start working with chocolate. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. But we, we've learned, and so you're standing in our kitchen and, and it's a bit cool, isn't it? It's cold in here, I'm surprised, but I love it because, you know, they, they keep saying that Malta is missing the heat wave, but I disagree with that statement. And it is really, really hot outside. So to come in here and feel this cool was like, such a welcome surprise. <laughs> so every day in the kitchen, we are between 16 and 20 degrees. Amazing. So we don't know about heat waves at Malta because- You live here. Course, nobody leaves the kitchen. We're here 24 hours a day because we love so much. <laughs> I love it. Now let's talk white chocolate. What does make that different? So white chocolate, what makes it different? So if you talk about milk chocolate, which has the four ingredients, cocoa powder, cocoa butter, um, milk and sugar, White chocolate just has the cocoa powder taken away. So it just has cocoa butter. Cocoa butter. Milk. Milk and, and sugar. sugar. And in fact, cocoa white butter. chocolate was invented in the 1940s. And it was invented because it was after the war and many kids were mal malnourished. And so they were asked to invent something that kids would eat and like that would give them lots of calories. And wow. so white chocolate got invented to help kids get better. Wow. Isn't that great? It is great. Now, it's fascinating. And so in, 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 in Europe, white chocolate is seen as a kid's chocolate. In America, white chocolate is seen as a delicacy because in America, they never needed to make white chocolate to feed malnutrition kids. I would agree with that because yeah. we do think of white chocolate as something a little bit more fancy. Yeah, that's interesting. So two different two different people can see things slightly differently. Very differently. Of what, what's been in there. I love it. So now I just want to look through, and I want you to tell us some of the things that you offer here because you you tried one of these small little pieces and it was chili. That's a chili truffle. So we chili make truffles. Truffle. So okay. what we do with our truffles is we, we have chocolate shells. We fill them with different flavored ganaches. We have twelve different flavors, including passion fruit and chili and mint and orange and they're We'll fat. show you the chocolate yeah. paper that shows all the truffles because that's beautiful, beautiful. The fact that you let beautiful my children try all those. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this behind me, am I allowed to ask about this? Because it looks fabulous. These? Can you see it? Yes. So this is I was getting ready for Christmas. If you're watching this, it's the uh, 22nd of July. Okay. And we're starting to make Christmas. Wow. So what these are, are our shells for our hot chocolate bombs. 
I love the hot chocolate bombs here. Those are what I sent home to everybody in the America, to my family. So we make half shells of hot chocolate bombs. We fill them with marshmallows. Okay. And then we seal them together. Yes. And then what we're doing, these ones, you can see they've got a, a yellow on them. Mm -hmm. Is so that an orange ones, glaze? This is a caramel flavor. So caramel. You smell that, you'll smell caramel. I love chocolate. Yeah. I don't even fake. I, everybody that knows me knows that chocolate, I told you this, I would skip any meal and just have dessert. Chocolate is my love affair. That's So, so this is us getting ready for Christmas. Ooh. We're making six different choc bomb flavors. Okay. And we're going to create a flight of choc bombs for the family. So you can each have a hot chocolate Christmas. That's caramel, mint, orange. Um, Chili? Ooh, no, we don't do chili. We don't do chili. I can't remember the other flavors. Anyway, six flavors. This is the skyline of our favorite city in the world, Valletta. So here's the deal. You have an Australian and American walk into a chocolate shop that's all Maltese. He's the owner. We love Malta. And so everything we do is to support and to shine our Maltese love affair. Correct. So this is the skyline of Valletta. Uh -huh. And this is your new newest thing that you're doing for chocolate. Correct. So we, we made this. This is a plastic 3D printed mold that we've made. Okay. And what we've then done is we've created... I'll get it out of the fridge. We've created a silicon mold out of that 3D printed mold there. And then what we do is we put chocolate in that silicon mold. Now this was only made yesterday, the silicon mold. And today is the first time you've ever put chocolate in there. Are you going to so open it and let us see the this final? This could go horribly wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> but I like that. So should we have a look at it? Yes, especially like? on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this worries me. <laughs> okay, so this, this, is thrills a, me. this is a silicon mold that okay. we made. Um, it's been filled with chocolate. Um, and it's already looking good. Here it is pulling away. Yum. <laughs> Do you ever find though, cause I'm, I feel like this is going to be one of them. It's beautiful. I see it. Is it too pretty to eat sometimes? Uh, is chocolate's, that fair never, to say? chocolate's never too pretty to eat. <gasps> it worked out perfect. Having said that, we make chocolate handbags and chocolate shoes, princess shoes. You also make chocolate footballs and here. Footballs. We call them soccer in America. And but... motorcycles as well, because oh, we've got a lot of people who love motorcycles here. Let Look, me show you Look, it worked chocolate. out perfect. Look at that. Isn't that there beautiful? it is, chocolate, Valletta chocolate. Do you have like a special name for it? Yeah, it's called Valletta chocolate. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> I Did know. you just think we that haven't, up? We haven't got that far yet. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that's not bad, it's my first It's attempt. beautiful. I need to scrape off a little bit of milk chocolate there. And that's going to look beautiful. Look at that. So this uh, will be packaged beautifully in a, in a, of course. In a Maltese. So it we love like showing skyline. off. We love showing off Malta and, and all of its flavors and everything that it's got. So apart from making chocolates like this, we also do experiences and we have an experience oh, center upstairs. Right. Okay. Now with our experiences, we do things like wine and chocolate pairing. So you Lovely. get to taste some of our chocolates. Okay. And also we pair that with four different wines and they're all local wines, including two that are from indigenous grapes that grow nowhere else except in Malta. Um, and we pair that and we let people taste it. We talk about the history of wine making in Malta. Did you know that there's been vineyards in Malta at least three different times. And each time a new regime comes in, they've pulled them out and put something else in, including cotton at one stage. And then the next regime comes and puts wine in again, wow. all the way back to Roman times. All the way back to Roman. That's, there's so many things. This is what I love about Malta. You can keep learning and keep learning and you will never get to the bottom exactly. because the history, the, the sightseeing, everything, there's treasures all over this island. I'm so in love with it and I love that I get to do this. So Neil, let's, uh, let's take a look around the store and uh, thank you for sharing all of this with us. I thank really you. appreciate it. Okay.